the dissolving, if that happens, of the EFCC doesn't stop, you know, the fight against corruption. The government still has, you know, other security agencies um, and um, other bodies, you know, that could also take up the fight against corruption. Hey, yo, what up, guys? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about what is happening, guys, between Very Dark Man, EFCC, and the Kogi government. You know how Kogi government is drawn into this, you know, the Yahaya Bello stuff, guys. And in fact, the EFCC right now is in a big trouble, you know, because they have been sued to court, you understand? And I'm going to be telling you more about that in this particular video. But there was one video one particular video trending which we are going to be talking about is this particular woman coming out to complain about what the ESCC did to her husband and a lot of people actually has been complaining recently about what ESCC is doing to them you understand they have been complaining of how most of the time they see EFCC illegally just bust into their apartment you know you know breaking their doors breaking their things and stuff so there have been a lot of complaints about the EFCC and we all know very dark man in fact was going to hold a protest previously you know for the EFCC especially because they refused to arrest yeah yeah Bello. so this was the woman what she had to say about the EFCC first of all EFCC office the one in say true and they are locking somebody up because EFCC does not know how to follow due process. You want private information. You want to request official information. There is absolutely nothing like data laws anymore in this country. You just wake up and decide because you have the right to say lock this person up. They should lock the person up. Requesting for personal information without official letter, without court order. And then you're locking a man up, keeping his wife at home and his baby at home without anything. The name of the officer is uh, Mrs. Damilola Ajayi. They used to say people call Damilola because even me, myself, my name is Damilola all of us are mad and since she wants to know madness her name is Dam Lola Jai who said to EFCC office locking up a man because you cannot follow due process everything in Nigeria has gone to fields any little thing nobody wants to follow due process again tomorrow all of us will be here all of us will be here tomorrow you want to lock somebody up sure you will lock somebody that has that is a signature to the account or that will put your face you people can lock me up today Dam Lola Jai is the one that started this we are coming. The person you are locking up is not a signature to the account. Lock me up, not him. But you are locking him up instead. No more rule of law in this country. Any little thing, everybody is showing power. Everybody is showing might. You have power to lock somebody up. Madam, sorry for what your husband is going through. But the only problem is this. Your husband does not have a godfather. Because according to the story, if person don't get godfather, yes, you know they respect you. They will treat you anyhow. But if you have a godfather or maybe your husband, maybe, maybe, if you collect from Yash, <laughs> yes, he go fear and or drop in Charlie's bay go house. You understand? Know, one godfather for court. But um, apparently, your husband is not like that. But, anyways, um, I'll pass through the EFCC office now. If you are there, we'll shout. And also, I will speak to my lawyer and then we'll go there. We'll go there and go and see now. Let's see what is going on there. You understand? Uh -huh. Maybe I talk to his lawyer. We'll go to the EFCC office. We'll go see what really they happen. No, you see the problem of this country. In advanced country, before they arrest you, they would have done the whole investigation to see that you are guilty. Then when they arrest you, you don't say you know they come back out again. But for Nigeria, they will arrest you while doing the investigation. And at the end of the day, case goes spoiled. Case goes spoiled. That is the problem. This same year, CC again, where they catch me for corruption. Now, when I corrupt pass, the corruption in your system is bigger than anything Nigeria has ever seen. EFCC is too corrupt. Too corrupt. Too corrupt. But I know where they really come. They know that they go there now. If I see you there, fine. If I don't see you, no problem. I wish I don't get a number. We'll go there, go follow the crease, the crease. This country will get better if we put hands together. But you see this, I don't care attitude. If you don't touch you, you know we talk. When they go touch you that time, you go learn and you will learn the hard way. Don't play. So there I was at the FCC office. I already knew that they were moving. I went there because you arrested the staff of my husband. And my husband being the owner of the company said, lock me up instead while you are conducting whatever investigation you want to conduct. So we are going there for him to present himself. On getting there, apparently, the woman that locked up the staff ran away. Because we told her we were coming, and in less than five, ten minutes, we were there. She ran away. And then out of anger, I stood in front of EFCC office, and I was ranting, which was when I made the first video. After I made the video, one of the officers came to meet me. He was like, Madam, calm down, Madam, calm down. You don't need to make noise. You don't need to make noise. I was even trying to tell him that, okay, I'm not making noise, but you know your officer is doing wrong. Before you know what was happening, this guy snatched my phone from my hand 
I'm like, bros, why did you snatch my phone from my hand? Unfortunately for him, as soon as I finished making the first video, I already uploaded on Facebook because I know how these people can be. You can never trust Nigerian officers and it's a very bad reputation for people to have. He snatched my phone from my hand. I'm like, okay, why are you snatching my phone from my hand? You want to beat me? The next thing he came and started using his chest to push me. <laughs> okay, wanted to fill me up. He started using his chest to push me. Diane, what will you do? And I'm like, if the boy you... He collected my phone, went away. And I'm like, bros, my personal information is on my phone. And I've remembered IG of police talking so many times that no officer has a right to collect your phone from you without a warrant. This man collected my phone from me. ESCC, if I'm lying, release the CCTV footage of the front of your office to prove me wrong. He collected the phone and went inside. And then another one. An ordinary security officer, obviously, it's probably a police officer, I don't care who he is, but he's a security officer at the front desk or whatever it is they call it, at the security post. He now looked at me as I was talking, he said, Madam, no, they shall see a shower. Like any little thing in Nigeria, once they see a woman that they cannot stand, a woman that they cannot in their lifetime open mouth and talk to, once they have the opportunity to talk in a way to humble her or to bring her down, they are going to say a shower. I'm supposed to feel ashamed or shut up because boy that if he sees me on a good day will prostrate to co and is calling me a shower i'm supposed to shut up because of that i beg who's my man will be a shower for here you call me a shower so make i keep quiet make i fear you who are you who you form who you be according to who are you ESCC, you need to retrain your officers you need to retrain them you are supposed to learn how to de-escalate issues not escalate issues because why did you snatch my phone why are you using your body to push me as a man telling me you me is that supposed to put the fear of god in me and then i'm going to keep quiet because one man said he's going to beat me who are you and then another officer from nowhere that is not involved in the situation came out and said i'm a shower if i'm lying release the footage this thing happened this evening release the footage in front of your office for me because i intend to take this up I intend to take this up. And unfortunately for you people, I have a video of the face of the person that called me a shawu. So if I am lying, please release the footage. Any little thing you see a woman, a shawu, that one snatch my phone using chest to push me. If you want to touch my bosom, just say it, make an open them for you. You are using chest to push me as what? As what? I'm very, very ashamed of EFCC. Very, very terrible. And all this unnecessary fishing expenditure that you people go to. Because Nigerians don't go to court. Nigerians always try to settle the situation out of court. Or they leave it to God. When I don't cross the wrong one. And to the officer that snatched my phone. That snatched my phone. Because I am standing on the road that the president before Tinubu and Buari built. Telling me I cannot stand on the road. And you want to push me away with your chest. We shall meet. So you can see what the woman said and you can even see the reaction very dark man gave to this woman guys because a lot is happening with the efcc right now and a lot of people don't really understand how the efcc you know work right now and that is the reason why in fact efcc has been sued to court you know but before the court case before i even tell you how the court case is going the date for the court and all that same woman came back again and cried out that the efcc was going to arrest her you understand for how she spoke to them and how she made the whole thing public and they are going to arrest her and this was what she actually said i have been informed by my lawyers that the efcc are planning to invite me for questioning for daring to embarrass them because i posted that video a uh, day before yesterday where the officer was harassed me and another one calling me a shower and because they illegally detained someone obviously so for daring to embarrass the commission they are planning to invite me for questioning and probably probably detain me which is their mo dear efcc i have not you i swear to god i have not you however tomorrow by 12 p.m on my life i intend to you people because i am going to share all the details of this investigation that you people are doing that is leading you to illegally detain an innocent person this time around eh, the innocent person that you people are detaining is my husband dear efcc you cannot beat me and tell me how to cry if you beat me i will cry as loudly as i want to because the more it's me the louder i you cannot me and say don't that was when i was a baby if you I would, and then i would say i will not cry 
Now, here, yes, sister, I am a grown woman. I am a mother. The way I was during labor when I was bringing forth a child is the way I was right now. Because you cannot bring me and tell me not to come. You have detained my husband. I want, I wish you success in your investigation. I swear to God, I wish you success in your investigation. But you see, I am going to share everything I know about that investigation tomorrow by 12 o'clock. If this man is not released, because this has absolutely nothing to do with him. What you are looking for is to figure out a way to incriminate him or to get death on the person that you are investigating. And you think it is by my husband, by me, <laughs> by detaining my husband or even threatening to detain me. I have come to realize it is the right of passage in this country to sleep in detention. Because if you don't sleep in detention, then it means you are not a patriotic Nigerian. So no problem. My husband will sleep there. He will be fine. Me, his wife, I'm ready to sleep there. I will be fine. But you see this nonsense, it will not continue. Tomorrow by 12 p.m., inshallah, if I don't see my husband in my front like this, I am releasing every detail about your investigation. Let us know the real meaning of your investments. So guys, you can see what is happening right now and you can see the reason why a lot of persons are actually complaining about the EFCC, you understand? But before I even show you what is really happening next, guys, just kindly drop your opinion. What do you think? Have you had an experience with the EFCC and what do you think about them right now? Then also, guys, in fact, this particular guy was being interviewed, you know, to talk about the case that is happening with EFCC and about 16 states have taken EFCC to court, guys. In fact, the court case now is judging on, you know, the constitutional right of having the EFCC. And in a nutshell, I think they are just trying to allegedly close down the EFCC. So probably that's what they are trying to do. And the case right now is in court. And this particular EFCC guy came out to explain what is happening. And you could see that this man, you know, was not in a very good mood, you know, because of the way um, the EFCC is getting heated pressure right now. So just watch the video and tell me what you think about about it on the comment section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like the video all right uh you've heard the argument you know the states are planning to take the efcc to court before we get into you know what the current challenges the efcc has, has had to face in the past few weeks or do i say months let's talk about what the implication of this might mean you know going to court and what's a ruling on in favor of the state should that happen you know what that would mean for the efcc well, ordinarily, I wouldn't want to talk about that. You know, when the matter is before the court, uh, elementarily, you know, we know that that is of this. We should not talk about it. But be that as it may, the overriding need for us to strengthen our nation against every form of uh, economic and financial crime cannot be overemphasized. Uh, if we leave the pyrotechnics of the law, the technicality of the law, uh, whatever argument anybody may want to come first, the truth of the matter is corruption is ruining in Nigeria, and it has to be tackled. So uh, let's allow the courts to decide. But you and I know that uh, we need to move a step further. We need to do something. Uh, the narrative has to change. The paradigm has to shift. We must not continue the way we are. And that is what the commission is doing. So uh, whatever might be the argument of anyone or group of individuals concerning that, well, let's, let's let the court decide. But it is, it is obvious that as a nation, we need to fight corruption. It, it is a matter that cannot be debated. You know, it is a matter that is beyond any controversy. Uh, so if uh, 20 people, 30 people, 40 people, 50 people, 1 million people go to court and say that, no, uh, the EFCC should not be allowed to function, we all know that that will not be in the overall interest of the nation. So let's allow the courts to decide. Well, I mean, the dissolving, if that happens, of the EFCC doesn't stop, you know, the fight against corruption. The government still has, you know, other security agencies um, and um, other bodies, you know, that could also take, take, up, take up the fight against corruption. Or maybe we'll set up a new agency. So it's not like, you know, Nigeria's fight against corruption is solely dependent on the existence of the EFCC in the first place. Um, the yeah. case yeah, well, you know, is being led by yeah, the see, Kogi yeah. state government. So do you think that it is because of the um, recent, you know, case concerning uh, former Kogi state governor Yahya Bello? Is that where you think that this is coming from? 
well, there, there is no need for us to, to make any conjecture or any speculation or any hypothetical consideration concerning where it is coming from. From whichever angle it may be coming from, the truth of the matter is that corruption is an issue in Nigeria, and it has to be tackled. And let me tell you, going by the track record of the EFCC, the pungency of our action, the credibility of our operations, the international accept acceptability of what we are doing, uh, I think the commission is in a better state to continue with what it is doing. So it doesn't matter what argument anybody is raising. So a few weeks back, I think just last month, I had calls to be in UK for, 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 for an engagement. And uh, when the immigration people at the airport, I think it was Gatwick Airport at the, in, in London, uh, when they were raising issues about my immigration issue, the moment I told them that I came from the EFCC, the narrative changed. Oh, you are from the EFCC. Oh, EFCC in Nigeria. Oh, you people are doing fantastic, and you are you are working. That is from another land. Okay, yeah, but that's from another. That. Okay, let's bring it back to Nigeria. I mean, you're getting raving reviews from the United Kingdom, but in Nigeria, it's a different kettle of fish. The reactions that we've seen from Nigerians and the statements that have been made about the EFCC has been one that is lacking of trust. Case in point is the Yahaya Bello case. Why did the EFCC not arrest Yahaya Bello when he submitted himself? You know, when he submitted himself to the EFCC headquarters. Very good. You know, ordinarily, uh, when you look at uh, a situation, if I were if I were in your situation, I would also ask the same question. Now, you, de de you declare somebody wanted. He came to your premises, and you did not arrest him. Uh, normally, ordinarily, anybody who and it it will raise some some few concerns. But the truth of the matter is that at our own end. Uh, we have facts. We work on, you know, the, EF, the EFCC is intelligence driven. Uh, we have at, uh, at our fingertips facts why we should not take him into custody when we came, when he came. We may not rush to the public, maybe because of the need for us to score some public relations, the point or whatever, to say this is the intelligence we have. We are not going to talk about it. But the truth of the matter is that ordinarily everybody will behave the way the public expected. But there are issues that that actually made it impossible for us to take him into custody. He knew and we knew. Uh, so at the appropriate time. Yeah, what what issues? Uh, what we are and asking is what the question really is about clarity on the issues that made you not arrested. I mean, I mean it's pretty obvious that there are issues. I, I, I may not be able for now, I may not be able to come to the public with some of this file. You know, there are issues that border on intelligence. There are issues that borders on the continuity of what we are doing. Uh, so that's what... Uh, so what know, is then the use of him being declared, be being declared wanted? You know, you why, see, why then is he being declared wanted? If logic. Yeah, what I mean, then is the use of him being declared him. wanted if he can walk into your office and walk out, you know, and then, you know, you say that there are reasons you can't arrest him. Why is he then wanted? And then, of course, you know, if you remember later that day, there were reports that the EFCC went you know, to once again exchange gunfire, I believe, I don't know what happened at the Kogi State Government House. So what then is the use of all of that? If you, I mean, if, if you say that there are reasons you can't arrest him. Yeah, you see, now when he came uh, to our premises, I just told you that ordinarily, using ordinary logic, you expect that somebody that I made declare one thing, it was yeah, your premises, you, you take him into custody. But we have reasons that are beyond what the public uh, uh, may, may, may have known, and I'm not going to talk about it. At the, the Kogi State incident, what happened at the government, government, governor's lodge, I was there. There is a lot of uh, misinformation, a lot of misrepresentation about what happened. I was there. I was there. Which is so why we are... So nothing I, we, they, they open. So, so what, what, so what happened... Understand? So Yeah, what happened there? Now, what happened there? Um, when he came... It is true that we ask him to to go back, and that at the appropriate time we will come for him. Uh, I mean, there was an agreement that he will come back. So, and we went, you know, as a responsible law enforcement uh, agency, you know, to meet with him, to have discussions with him, and to bring him, you know, in the way we wanted. And of course, the security details opened fire, you know, raising issues, and because we didn't want. Because we didn't want uh, anything that may 
uh, cause a kind of uh, breakdown of law and order, we have to ask our men, you know, to retreat and to come back. It's, it's not the yeah. EFCC that opens yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm mostly just responding to, to what you said initially, that there are reasons you didn't arrest him um, when he came or you asked him to go back. It, it just doesn't make sense that you asked him to go back and then later that day you then go and then his men open fire at you. All right. Uh, unfortunately, you I mean, know, you said to us don't that... Forget, don't, forget, don't forget that I earlier told you that at the appropriate time we are going to bring to the public domain All right. why he was not arrested on our premises. Mr. Ewale, we, we, time, we hope that, you know, that can happen very soon because Nigerians want some clarity. We unfortunately are running out of time, but let's quickly ask you. Uh, Bob Risky, there, there have been allegations I mean, that you know, Bob Risky I, allegedly... I remember that we issued, we issued a press statement. We, we saw issued that. a press statement very recently. We saw that. The, yeah, you saw it, fine. Now, the, the Ayabelo issue is not what is going to determine the effectiveness or lack of it. For the, EFCC. the Supreme Court has fixed October 22nd for the hearing of a suit filed by at least 16 state governments challenging the constitutionality of the laws establishing the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and two others. Do you think this move by the governors is politically motivated? Absolutely. I, I think it is not only political motivated, I think it is just aimed at serving the selfish interests of the governors of those states who are seeking to challenge the uh, constitutionality of the EFCC Establishment Act. Of course, you will agree with me that the, um, the state's governments have been a major uh, 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 impediment to the implementation of uh, various anti-graft laws across the country. And in fact, um, in recent times, Kogi State, which spearheaded this um, suit at the Supreme Court, has been uh, in the news uh, recently for over the uh, attempt to investigate the uh, former state governor, who, of course, uh, also installed the current governor. And without any doubt, there, this is the motivation for the uh, current suit. And you will understand why the other state governors, the, the other 15 state governors, also feel the need to join. It is basically self-preservation, self-interest. And I think that's what it is all about, nothing more. Hmm. And, and, and what specific sections of the Nigerian constitution might the Supreme Court examine you know, to determine whether uh, whether or not this is even legal in the first place, you know? Well, the uh, Kogi state government and, um, has sought to rely on Section 12 of the Constitution, which, of course, um, requires that when international conventions are adopted, um, the I mean, two uh, um, chambers of the National Assembly must approve of them, and then... There, there must be some sort of approval from the state um, uh, houses of assembly. This argument, I think, is very flawed because while the EFCC Act itself might have been uh, something that was done in order to fulfill Nigeria's international obligations, and perhaps the Act itself might have adopted uh, to a large extent a UN convention, it is not necessary true and correct that the EFCC Act was adopting the convention. The EFCC Act, nowhere in the Act was it stated that this Act is, I mean, aimed at adopting this UN convention. Nowhere. And so that, where that argument is coming from can only be from a, 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 a very ridiculous, ridiculous standpoint that only the Kogi state governor and other state governors can see. It is an act, a legislation of the National Assembly. And as such, it was validly passed by the National Assembly, applicable across the, uh, the, entire, the entire Federation. There is no, or I expect the Supreme Court anyway to, to, to dismiss it swiftly and decisively. I, I think at this point, we need to establish whether or not there's been legal pre precedents, if any even exist, regarding challenges to the constitutionality of federal agencies, you know, such as this, uh, such as the, the anti-craft agency EFCC here in Nigeria. Uh, well, I, 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 I don't even know about. Um, I'm not aware of any uh, suit that has sought to challenge the establishment of such agencies. But I can tell you that yes, there are laws that have been made in Nigeria at the federal level which seek or sought to adopt uh, UN conventions. So, for instance, the Child Rights Act. Um, the the Violence Against uh, Persons Prohibition Act and other similar acts that were 
essentially intended to adopt certain international conventions. Now, these um, uh, such laws generally will be applicable only at the federal level or to federal agencies only. And then, of course, they will only be made applicable by the states when they are adopted at by the, uh, the various states' um, uh, houses of assembly. And um, well, these ones were there were no arguments; nobody sought to challenge anything. I think it just I mean everybody just agreed that that was the position. But in this case, the AFCC Act did not state there was nothing, whether in the recitals or in the main body of the Act itself, that says that it is intended to adopt a particular. Uh, a convention. So it is an act of the National Assembly made applicable across the country. Now, the argument being advanced by the Kogi state that the EFCC Act was derived from a United Nations convention and requires that approval by the state's houses of assembly is misplaced. It is important to clarify that the establishment was done uh, through a valid legislative process as, as provided by the Constitution by the National Assembly under its powers in the constitutions to make laws for peace, order, and good governance. It does not adopt a UN convention. It was merely created to fulfill Nigeria's international obligations. And of course, remember, to combat corruption and economic crimes. Remember, at, a, at, the, at that time, Nigeria was regarded as a pariah state across the, the, country, the world. It was just coming out from a very deeply uh, 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 resented military government. And there was a need, of course, by Nigeria, of course, to show that it was already ready to combat corruption. And this was what led to the establishment of the EFCC, the ICPC, and um, one or two other agencies like that. So it is a necessity for national security and economic prosperity. So the suggestion that every international obligation uh, requires ratification by all states is not only impractical, but it's legally unsound, and I, I totally do not agree with it.